the lady that was our pilot is a Navy veteran of 32 years. She has nerves of steel. That lady, I applaud her. I'm going to send her a Christmas card, I'm going to tell you that, with a gift certificate for getting me on the ground. She was awesome. The crew was awesome. That's right. The crew was awesome. The crew and that lady are here today. Those were the passengers on Southwest Flight 1380 praising the crew after their terrifying ordeal, and terrifying is the word. Welcome back to CBS This Morning. About 20 minutes after the plane took off from New York's LaGuardia Airport on April 17th, one of the engines exploded. Debris shot through the air, smashing a window. One passenger was partially sucked out of the window and later died. It was the first passenger death due to an acci accident rather on a U.S. airline since 2009. So with just one engine still working, the pilots landed safely at Philadelphia International Airport. The crew members say they cannot comment on the ongoing investigation, but there's still a lot to talk about with them. Captain Tammy Jo Schultz, First Officer Darren Ellisor, and flight attendants Rachel Fernheimer, Shawnique Mallory, and Catherine Sandoval are here only on CBS This Morning for their first joint television interview. Welcome. Thank it you. is amazing to be able to spend time with you Thanks and so meet all of you. Let's, Timmy, Joe, and Darren. You guys were in the cockpit. When did you realize there was an emergency? Um, I was flying, and we were passing through 32,000 feet. Nice day. Everything was very normal, and there was a, a loud bang. The airplane yawed to the left, kind of like an, a skid of a, of a car. Um, rolled about 40 degrees to the left and, uh, and started to descend on its own. Uh, so I grabbed control of the airplane because it was on autopilot at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, with the horns going off and the rapid decompression of the cabin, it all happening at once, uh, there was no question that something big was going on right then. Rachel, uh, describe what was happening in the cabin. How did you keep passengers calm? Well, I think that we had to take ourselves out of the equation and realize that it wasn't about us at that moment, and it was all about our passengers. So we went row by row, making sure everyone had their oxygen masks on, and we just grabbed their hands, looked them in the eyes, and said, you're going to be okay. We're going to make it. Did you really think that everybody was going to be okay at that time? We did, had... you, did you really believe that? Because I know as a passenger, the main thing I do is look at the flight attendant's face mm -hmm. to see if they look distressed, if they look upset. And, and when you look at a flight attendant, always, they always seem to be very calm. Did you really think everything was going to be okay? Yes, yes. we had confidence knowing that uh, we were all going to make it, um, that we had faith and belief in our pilots, mm -hmm. and that we were all going to be safely on the ground. And we just kept that confidence the whole way through, let them know. Tammy Joe, when this happens, do you say, I know what it is, or how long does it take to figure out what has happened and then how to correct it? You know, initially, and Darren was flying, you treat the symptoms. So uh, we, we obviously had an engine uh, seizure at least, and with the rapid depressurization, it was pretty obvious that there was an explosion as well as the sound. And so we treated the symptoms, which was let the aircraft fly. It wasn't wanting to uh, stay on altitude. So we descended like it wanted to. Mm -hmm. and, and then we just started doing the things that we needed to do. We obviously needed a place to land sooner than Dallas. And so we found uh, Darren is actually the one that saw how far away Philly was. And, and we agreed that had a long runway and medical and things like that. So. Really, you, you treat the symptoms first, and then you analyze the problem. And so we then we started analyzing. We obviously had an engine; uh, the number one engine was out, and rapid depressurization. And then, as we eventually were able to speak with the flight attendants, because they, the only time they can communicate with us in the cockpit is when they're either in the very back or the very front. Yeah. And so they waited until, I believe they waited until they went through the, uh, the cabin to make sure everything was okay before they called us. And then they called us and told us that we, we uh, had some injury in the back as well. So mm -hmm. then we have a medical emergency as well to deal with. So I want to ask you about that, Tammy Jo, because Jennifer Reardon um, right. passed away. And I know you all have reached out to her family. Tell us about that. You know, the survival of 148 never eclipses the loss of one. And just from 
a viewpoint looking in. She seemed like a woman with a profile of just being beautiful in, in her priorities. Uh, she seems like she didn't wait until it was convenient or easy to love her Lord and her family and her community and, and the way she invested in her, her work. Just mm -hmm. seems like it's still blessing people. I think she left a beautiful legacy for she her family. She really did. Her husband mm -hmm. has certainly talked and we've seen the funeral and her children. And you're right, as, as happy as it is that everybody survived, most people, all of us can't stop thinking about Jennifer Reardon. And I'm fascinated by that part of the story because when you look at the size of an airplane window, I wouldn't even think a human being could get through a window. Rachel? You know, I, I think we're just really thankful that we had awesome passengers that were able to assist us during a really difficult time. Without them, the situation could have been a lot different. But how is it physically possible that she could go out that window, mm -hmm. Tammy Joe, mm -hmm. Darren? We saw a lot of things that day that were just unprecedented. I yeah. mean, something that we had never seen mm -hmm. uh, in our aviation careers. And it was just things that, you're never going to see again, and we just had to deal with what we had uh, at the time. Catherine, you had only been working for Southwest for six weeks. Yes, yes. But I've already been in the aviation industry for the last 18 years, mm -hmm. so I already had like experience in the, um, in the airline. And so, in all those years, had you ever experienced anything like this? No, no. And this was the first time this crew had flown together, right? Yes. Correct. Yes. So, yeah. how did you all know what to do and work so well together? <laughs> I know it's training. Tammy Jo, you, 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 yeah. jo, you told me an interesting story about all of your discussion right before this flight took off. Yeah. Well, um, when we meet the first thing in the morning, which was from Nashville to LaGuardia, we all met in the in the um, galley and talked about the weather and and the the protocol of Southwest is to have a morning brief. So we did that, but. Um, we, I tend to go a little deeper just because people are deeper than the weather. And so we, we spoke about some things that were, were a little more interesting than just the weather. You and told me you guys all talked about your prayer groups. Well, in LaGuardia, when we had yeah. a little extra time, we were up chatting and Rachel had gotten a new Bible with room to journal on the side. And she and Shanique and then uh, Catherine was talking about she was in the study of Psalms, which is where I'm, I'm doing a study in Psalms and Proverbs. And yeah. Darren, he's always busy in the cockpit as the first officer. <laughs> but he, he already invested, just let us know a little bit about his family. And so people talk, when you talk about things deeper than the weather, your family, your faith, you know, the things that matter to you, even if they're different, mm -hmm. it tends to bring a bond. When Tammy Jo shared that with me, I thought, wow, this was a group, even though you guys had never flown together, you guys had shared values. Values, and that was so important in a moment in crisis because you trusted one another. Yes. That's yeah. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. Catherine, tell us about the passengers. I mean, they, their reaction uh, in in helping Jennifer Reardon in, in just reacting to this. Um, the passengers. I mean, our, our passengers were awesome. I mean, our safe their safety was the first priority with us, and the way that we all remained calm reflected on the passengers. They seen that in us because they look and yeah. seeing how we're reacting and the fact that we were all calm, that's what kept our passengers together, working together as well, helping each other. I mean, our priority was going to each one of them and comforting them and as Rachel said, we were telling them we're going to land, we're going to we're going to be okay. We're going to make it. Well, I we're know they call it. you Unique Shanique. <laughs> and, they said, and they said that there's a reason for that and I'm curious, we're did all of you at some point feel afraid? We did not. You did not feel, feel afraid. afraid. Well, that it makes you unique right there. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Why were you not afraid? Well, uh, it was the peace that God had all, that given us all. I mean, it's a, it's a peace that surpasses all understanding. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. like uh, Tammy just said, we came together beforehand and we all talked about God and not knowing what was going to happen. Um, minutes later, mm -hmm. God had already prepared us without us even knowing. But I want to get, I want people to really get an understanding of how bad this was because you were saying it's really loud in that cabin. Yeah. Give yeah. me an example, because I, I, listen, there are very degrees of loud. How loud was it and how did you communicate when it's that loud? Mm -hmm. For us, you have to really paint a picture. For us, we really we didn't have to communicate verbally with each other because we just had trust and we were able to just do what we needed to do. But to to communicate with our passengers, we had to have a very loud, stern 
but caring voice to make sure that they knew. What would you knew. say? What would you say, Rachel? I would just grab their hands, even if I had to stretch over into a window seat, and I would just look into some of their bloodshot eyes and say, look at me. We're going to be okay. We're going to make it. We are going to Philadelphia, and we are here together. And I think that was the most important thing was to just even though our ears were had popped from the rapid decompression mm. and there was wind and debris all throughout the cabin, in the midst of chaos, you have to just look at someone. And I think eye contact was the biggest communication during that. Wow. Right. No. Wow. wow. We're going we're gonna to keep with this story. All of you will be here. The crew of Flight 1380 will stay with us ahead. We'll hear their thoughts about returning to the sky, but first, a check of your local weather.